Hey guys, Ivan here, and we are hours away from the 2023 Mr. Olympia Open Division. Tonight is the pre-judging, and we get a couple of very interesting updates only hours before the show. So the first one, as you can see, is of Samson Dauda. So let's take a look at his conditioning. Let's see what he's bringing and can he fulfill my prediction? Can he become the 2023 Mr. Olympia? Well, first of all, even though it's a physique update and you can see his entire body from the front, it's really hard to say what he's gonna bring to that stage because, first of all, he is not even flexing here. Like, he is not hitting a pose. He is about to hit a crab most muscular. So, as you can see, his quads are not flexed. His arms, his shoulders, his chest, nothing is really flexed. But even relaxed like this, he does look very good. Like, first of all, those legs kind of remind me of Sean Roden's legs back in the day. But again, he is not really flexing them hard. So once he's on that stage with the oil on, once he completely dries out, there is still more time. There is maybe like nine hours until he steps on the stage. And I don't know when this photo was taken. It was probably in the morning. So there's probably more time between this photo and the stage. And it is the last day when your body dehydrates and dries out completely. I don't know what they're doing, what the approach is. I know Milos is an expert on diuretics. He knows basically all of them. But I don't know if he, if he gave Samson anything the night before. Because he competes at the pre-judging and the finals. So I think maybe it's too early to take the night before. Maybe he just took something the morning of the show. Maybe he didn't take anything. I don't know. But even if they did it naturally, if they just pulled water... It's still the last day when the magic happens, so I'm expecting him to be even drier than he is right here tonight on the stage. But I gotta say once again, if he flexed fully here, he would look much drier, much crispier, much more detailed. Now, does he look full and big and round? I would say he doesn't look as full and as big as he was last year in the Mr. Olympia. And Milos actually talked about this in a podcast, that the plan is not to overcarb him, not to fill him up completely where he is blasting full, because he already has that 3D look. He has enough muscle that he can't really get flat. So he doesn't need a ton of carbs to be full, to look full. He's already full. He just needs to carb up, you know, just enough so he can flex, so he can have a pump, so he's full just enough. Not super, super blasting full. And that way they're going to ensure that he's going to be as crispy as possible. As detailed, as dry as possible. And my impression based on this photo here is that we're going to see Samson in his best conditioning ever. We can't really tell much until we see his backside. You know, it's usually like his glutes where he holds the most amount of fat and water. Uh, also his lower back, I would say. Hamstrings, not so much. His hamstrings are always, like, very good. So we don't really know how conditioned he will be. I mean, how, how, how much did he improve his conditioning from behind? But based on this photo from the front, I think he is going to be very, very conditioned. Now, top three for Samson would be a huge success. I don't see him placing lower than that. No, no, no way. But I think he's going to place higher. I still have him as a winner of this show. And I have Derek in second. I still stand by what I said, I will stick with my prediction, I still don't see why Samson can't win the Mr. Olympia, and I think he will. And once again, based on this photo, I'm pretty sure Samson is bringing something that we never saw of him. Alright, next we got a physique update of Brandon Curry, and he is in, he is doing this show 100%, he is not out, I'm sure you guys heard this rumor, because he did have a food poisoning. And he was in a hospital, but he got the medical clearance and he's going to be competing tonight. And he posted a couple of very good photos from the hotel room. And we're going to look at them one by one and let's see what kind of, what sort of package is Brandon Curry bringing. Now, I gotta say, like, him being in a hospital because of food poisoning means that he wasn't able to eat real food for, I don't know how long. And do you guys remember when Fu Arabia talked about what he did before his show where he looked the best? Yeah, I don't want to say what he did exactly because it's really dangerous. I don't want to give anybody any ideas, but basically Fuad was all night in the hospital, the day before the show, the night before the show. He wasn't eating anything or drinking, he was on an IV drip. And in the morning he woke up more shredded than ever. 
it was, as he says, his most conditioned, his best look ever. There was one more thing that he did, the reason why he got hospitalized in the first place, uh, and that probably helped, I guess, I don't know, it was really stupid. Anyways, uh, after that, Fuad looked his most shredded, and the same thing might happen with Brandon Curry. Now, last year, uh, Brandon was good, like, he was really good, but he was way too full. So, we know one thing, because of this, he probably won't be blasting full. And he's gonna be more conditioned. And I think in this lineup today, I think it's gonna work in his favor. So as you can see in this front lat spread here, he does look more conditioned than last year. He does look drier and harder. Maybe his legs are not the biggest, and that's why I don't have him in my top three. If there was Nick Walker in, I wouldn't have him in my top four. But I do now. I think he's gonna play his fourth. But who knows, maybe Andrew Jack is going to challenge him, maybe somebody else, but I, I doubt that. I think he's going to be fourth, right behind Samson, Hadi, and Derek. Now let's see some other shots, maybe this one is not his best because it's a front pose. I think front double and uh, front lat are not the best poses for him because he can't hide those legs in those poses. In the side shots, he kind of can. So this one, for example, yeah, yeah, pretty dry, pretty dry for Brandon Curry. Uh, he doesn't look like he lost any fullness, you know, being hospitalized, having that uh, food poisoning, whatever was wrong with his stomach, it didn't affect him. He still looks big and full and round and pretty dry. And I really like this photo of his, it's a little bit from an angle, so, and also you can see his whole legs, but that upper part does look pretty detailed and pretty full. The waist is small, the abs are really good, the uh, lats are popping, arms are big and biceps are popping chest, everything, you know, from the front, upper body, I'm sure it's even better from behind, his back is really good, so, yeah, he does look awesome, but once again, there is no chance I can see him beating those three guys, but fourth place this year will be phenomenal for Brandon. Alright, next we got a really freaking impressive update of Ramon Dino, I mean, look at the size of those freaking arms, I mean, they're looking really, really huge, and look at the chest as well, really conditioned. And you guys remember that last year, him and Chris Bumstead made the last call-out, the two-man call-out. And in my previous video, I said Terence Ruffin is gonna beat uh, Ramon Dino, but now I have to take that back. After seeing this update of Ramon Dino, yeah, I think it's gonna be the same story like last year. This guy is gonna challenge Chris Bumstead. And what he did in the offseason, I think, is he really pushed his arms. I think he grew really much in that department. Why? Well, I'm guessing because he knows that Chris doesn't have the best arms. He has pretty weak arms. Like, genetically, he doesn't have the best, uh, the best insertions, the best structure for arms. And this guy does. Like, he's very dominant in the arms and forearms. I mean, with those arms, he could do open bodybuilding if he wanted to add, a, to add more size. So he probably thought, well, I have this body part that is better than his. Let's make it even that much more better. And, I mean, classic physique, like, how how important are arms? Well, if you look at the winner, the, the dominant winner, it's Chris Bumstead, who doesn't have really good arms, you would assume that you probably don't need big arms for classic physique. Well, in open bodybuilding, you gotta have big arms. I mean, everything has to be big, but in classic, you can kind of get away with smaller arms if you have a really good structure and stuff like that. And Chris, he just has everything really good, but... If somebody is, let's say, as good as him, but also has these big arms and these well-shaped arms, I mean, Flex Wheeler in 1993, where he basically had the weight for classic physique, he looked crazy, and he had humongous arms. And I think that physique is probably prettier, more classic than that of Chris Bumstead. I mean, Chris Bumstead took it to another level now. He's basically unbeatable. But still, like, this is something that's gonna help Ramon Dino push Chris Bumstead a little bit more than last year. I don't know if he really made much progress, but these arms do look bigger now. And overall, it seems like Ramon is really bringing good condition. And uh, yeah, right now, I gotta say, this guy is gonna be in top two again. And we also got a physique update of Charles Griffin hours before the stage. Now, what can Charles do at this year's Mr. Olympia? Well, he's coached with Matt Jensen. And Matt Jensen is one of the best coaches in the world. I would say top three, top four maybe right now. I mean, Honey Rambo, Chris Asito, Milos Archev and him. 
I don't know in which order. I mean, of course, Heiner Hamburg is the first, but then I'm not sure who is second. And this year, the Mr. Olympia, it's not going to be Matt Jensen who is the first, who is the, who is the second best coach, because Nick Walker is out. And who Matt Jensen has? Well, he has, he's probably going to have a 2-12 winner, and he's also going to have two guys in the open, Charles Griffin and Justin Shire. And I don't think any of those two guys is going to make the top 10. Now, Charles Griffin might do it, maybe. Maybe because he is very gnarly, he's very, very conditioned, and he has a lot of muscle. But with his pack tear and with his structure, I don't see that happening. I don't think he's going to be in the top 10. Now, without Nick Walker, maybe he can challenge somebody like Hassan Mustafa, or I don't think he can challenge Tony Obert in no way. Uh, maybe Hassan Mustafa if he's really off. But I mean, with his structure and now with the pack tear, I don't really have super high expectations from Charles Griffin, but whatever you guys think, tell me down below in the comment section. Stay tuned for the best Mr. Olympia coverage on YouTube, and this means subscribe to my channel. If you guys enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. Thank you so much for watching. See you soon, guys. All the best, and bye-bye.